Distinguished guests, dear friends, it is a great honor for me to stand before you and bring you warm greetings from the African National Congress and the struggling people of South Africa. In particular, Oliver Tambo, our president, lends you his best wishes and deep appreciation for your support over the long years of our bitter struggle. During the long years when we were in prison, you did not forget us. Neither did you abandon our struggling people. You enlisted the most cherished beliefs of your religious calling. You took up the mission of promoting justice and peace and helped the people's fight against the evil of a party. We salute you. We thank you for the resolute contribution. It is a precious gift. We are confident that in the very near future, it will contribute to the realization of the non-racial, non-sexist, democratic, and united South Africa of our joint aspirations. <laughs> we are now closer to this goal than at any time in our history. In the words of the prophet Isaiah, we have risen up as on the wings of eagles. We have run and not grown weary. We have walked and not fainted. <laughs> and finally, our destination is in sight. Our people have hungered and thirsted to their liberation, for their liberation. Many have died, many thousands no exile, been jailed, banned, and restricted. South Africans unnamed have gone without recognition and are known only to their maker. They have paid the supreme sacrifice. They will be vindicated by the completion of the cause first undertaken by our movement 78 years ago. Throughout the more than two score years of apartheid and generations of our colonial history, some of our white compatriots have shared in that struggle. At this time, Increasing numbers 
are ready to thrust aside this ungodly system of a party and participate in the creation of a new democratic South Africa. I am mindful that this church has on so many occasions been the venue of anti-apartheid events and hosted many a South African speaker who has brought to this city the cry of our people. Above all, I am grateful for the gracious reception this church has afforded my long-standing friend and comrade in struggle, the President of the African National Congress, Oliver Tambo. <laughs> when our cause was not a popular cause in the corridors of power in Western nations, it was religious communities, college and university campuses, and anti-apartheid organizations in the United States and elsewhere that stood firm on economic sanctions. I am here today to say thank you. The ANC acknowledged that anti-apartheid work of religious leaders and lay people across the land. We are indebted to all of you who promote our cause here and throughout the world. Our victory will be your victory. Today, some of the household names in South Africa are of religious leaders whose commitment to their faith and engagement in the struggle for a new South Africa is without contradiction. They have shown that religion is about the celebration of liberation, the affirmation of the fullness of life, the dignity of God's children, black and white, male and female, young and old. We have committed ourselves unequivocally to opposing white racism and black racism. We reject sexism and have pledged ourselves to affirm <laughs> and we have pledged ourselves to affirm and promote the equality of women in a new South Africa. Our young people want and have every right to a quality education, both in apartheid jails and outside. Our agent deserve to have social security, housing and health care. In these values, we share common ground. We enter now the final phase of our struggle. The structures of apartheid are crumbling. The old order 
is crumbling. But the age of freedom has not yet dawned. We have not come to this point because of some kind of miraculous change of heart in the South African government, no. <laughs> the willingness of Mr. de Klerk and his government to talk, which is what we demanded before we went to jail 27 years ago, has come about because of pressure from the youth workers, religious, peasant, and professional community, supported by the international community, our broad-based national movement for liberation has rendered large sections of South Africa virtually ungovernable. They virtually unbanned the ANC before February 2nd, 1990 and organized an effective defense campaign that challenged apartheid segregated facilities. Our struggle has been complemented by massive international activity, a central part of which has been economic sanctions. These economic sanctions must be maintained for the simple reason for the simple reason that the principle of one person, one vote, is still the privilege of whites only in the country of my birth. Apartheid laws are still entrenched in South African statute books, and we still cannot yet fully engage in political mobilization and education without state violence that lacks in every corner of South Africa. We have as yet to have concrete evidence that the clerk is prepared for transition to full democracy. To lift sanctions now before we have seen profound and irreversible change in a party would be a serious political error It could plunge us back into the darkness from which our country is painfully struggling to emerge. Our vision, to which a significant majority of South Africans subscribe, is that of the Freedom Charter, which declares, quote, South Africa belongs to all who live in it black and white. And no government can justly claim authority unless it is based on the will of all the people." Unquote. The unspeakable poverty of our people is the result of apartheid legislation, which has systematically and deliberately stripped us of our right to earn a decent living, forcefully deprived us of land, and relegated us to the position of perpetual economic serfs. What is sacred to us is the necessity to improve the quality of life for all our people, not only the whites. We do not suggest <coughs> that an economic solution can be realized overnight. And we have invited all our compatriots to join us in working out a system 
that will ensure equitable opportunities for all South Africans. We do not doubt the integrity of De Klerk and his colleagues, but they have not as yet removed the obstacles preventing the process of negotiations from unfolding. Only unremitting struggle inside and outside South Africa can bring about our desired option. We remain committed to a negotiated settlement, but we still do not have a climate conducive to negotiation. South Africans must learn to live together and resolve our differences peacefully. Alternatively, the future is very dark. My instinctive revulsion for gratuitous violence is deeply disturbed by the forces of conflict and destruction that are tearing out the heart of Natal. Finally, one of the most daunting responsibilities facing the ANC is the reconstruction of our movement inside the country. A prerequisite for this is the repatriation of the reset and the resettlement of almost half a million people, including thousands of ANC exiles all over the world. They need to come home to play their rightful role in the creation of a new South Africa. I hope that as ecumenical parties to the religious communities in South Africa, you will be able to assist us. My appeal to all people of goodwill today is to stand firm. Your message to the declared government and to your own legislators, if necessary, must leave no doubt as to what the oppressed in South Africa and freedom-loving people the world over demand. It is democracy. Once more, thank you for your warm welcome. We have been overwhelmed by the touching expressions of love and concern we have received since we arrived in the USA. We accept your kindness because we know that in part it is a, a string, a shining tribute to the indomitable spirit of our courageous people. Thank you very much. Thank you. to hear a rendition of Nkosi Sikaleli, Africa. That means God bless South Africa and it's the national anthem.